I'd like to speak with the analyst who seems to stumble across this mess. Certainly. That would be Peter Sullivan, right here. Oh, Mr. Sullivan, you're here. Good morning. Maybe you could tell me what you think is going on. And please, speak as you might to a young child or a golden retriever. It wasn't brains that got me here, I'm sure you that. The year is 2008, and the music of investing sounds gracious. Millions of Americans are buying homes, and banks are just lending money to anyone that even mentions the word real estate. For a while, the public enjoyed interest rates at 4% or possibly even lower, incentivizing more and more people wanting to pull out loans to buy houses or anything else their heart desires. Hell, everyone and their grandma was lending money from the bank. Your neighbor? Bank loan. The mailman? Bank loan. The McDonald's worker who puts way too much ketchup on my burger in the afternoon? Bank loan. Unfortunately, with how money was just being lent to anyone practically, the consequences caught up and the economy fell. But what if I told you that there was a movie that showcases an investment firm who knew what would happen a day or two before the financial disaster and only took measures to cover their own asses? That's right. Today we are exploring the wonderful and a very much taste of reality movie called Margin Call. Now, hear me out for a minute, okay? I went through this movie going into it, I was like, okay, it's just gonna be another financial movie about the 2008 crash, right? But when I actually started to sit down and watch it, I actually got through like three quarters of the movie through, and I was just like, oh my god, I just can't believe that people are like this nonchalant about other people losing money whenever they're the reason why they're losing money. It's just wow. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, then please continue watching the video because as it keeps going, it just keeps getting more and more mind blowing. Take this clip from the movie and you'll see what kind of mentality we're dealing with here. So you think we might have put a few people out of business today? That's all for naught. It's just money. It's just money. It's just money. Yeah, let's just jump right into it. The movie takes place at an investment firm right before the 08 crash and before the disaster even starts. Now, a big component in this movie is that the entire movie takes place in a 24 hour period, so please keep that in mind. At the very start of the movie, HR comes through the whole building and starts laying off a bunch of people. However, one of those people that they fire is actually a risk manager who was working on a project that was very secret, and only he knew about it, no one else. But then, right when he's leaving and going into the elevator, he hands a US USB drive over to his colleague and tells him to be careful. Sullivan, the guy who was handed the USB drive, stays a couple hours more in the office to figure out what was going on and how to crack this equation on what he was talking about with the USB drive. And I'm just saying, if that was me, I would be asking for some overtime pay. You feel me? I mean, I can't. Am I the only one feeling that? Am I the only one who would think that? No. <laughs> okay. His friends, or other co-workers, decide to go clubbing, and they beg him to go with him, but Sullivan insists, and he stays down, and he works on the project. After about an hour or two of crunching numbers, he finally comes to the realization of what's about to happen to the company, and where they stand financially. So, he calls up his boss, and his friends that were out clubbing, and they come back to the office to discover what was going on. This is basically everything that we have in our books at any given time. It fall outside of the standard VAR model. Volatility levels are set using historic patterns basically and then stretching those patterns out another 10 15 percent roughly so we are starting to uh, test those historic patterns this is fucking huge how oh, huge well the losses are greater than the current value of the company projected losses a projected loss as well now to break down what they just said a little bit more in short the company is infringing in its var model for about two weeks and if they don't get rid of the assets or the mbs's then shit's going to hit the fan for those who don't know what an mbs is let me give you an example let's say you're cruising down the street in a 2012 honda civic and you spot a home that just speaks to you and you talk about how you want that house so badly suddenly your wife next to you pipes up and says we need to buy a house because I want to grow a family and that one looks perfect. Also you need to sell this piece of shit Honda Civic because it's broken down three times since we left the driveway. And holy shit two hours later you're already at the bank trying to sign documents. Talk about a straightforward woman. <laughs> now luckily this is 2005 and everyone is loaning money to anyone that is willing. And again let's just say that this is way before the 08 crash and this is when prices started to go up on houses. So fortunately the bank lends you the money without bad 
batting an eye. The bank then sells your loan to an investment firm like the one in the movie and receives a bunch of money for it. Now for the last step, the investment firm will now take a bunch of other loans just like yours and package them up into what is called an MBS, which, you guessed it, is a mortgage backed security. Now for the firm in this example and in this movie, most if not all of their assets are MBSs or mortgage backed securities. And little do they know what's about to happen in the economy. Except that's what was going to happen until Sullivan, the risk analyst, was able to recognize the coming crash and the situation as a whole. The firm then called for an emergency meeting and this is where stuff starts to really get real. And before I even get into what they're about to talk about and what the decision the CEO makes, I want you the viewer to put yourself in the CEO's shoes and then afterwards I want you to put yourself into a moral standpoint to see what would actually be right and tell me in the comments what you would do below because I'm like whenever I watched a movie I was both flabbergasted at the situation and the kind of decision he made. Sell it all today. Is that even possible Sam? Yes but at what cost? 40% done by 10.15. By 11 o'clock, all your trades have to be gone because by lunchtime, word's gonna be out. And by two o'clock, you're gonna be selling at 65 cents on the dollar if you're lucky. Even if we manage to pull that off, and that's saying something. If you do this, you will kill the market for years, it's over. And you're selling something that you know has no value. So the ice is broken and the CEO and the whole board meeting knows that the entire asset class and everything that they hold is basically going to be worthless in a few days. And if they don't sell everything, all their assets, all the MBSs, everything, then their entire company is going to be worthless and everyone's going to be laid off. So I'm going to give you around seven seconds. Is it A, is he going to tell everyone to just be calm and do nothing? B, to tell everyone to keep going and do their jobs? Or C, liquidate all your holdings and then tell no one what is about to happen and screw over all your clients and your customers? Customers. Good luck. The timer starts now. Ah, oh, what the hell? You already know what it is. It's C. He sold out everything. We are selling to willing buyers at the current fair market price so that we may survive. You will never sell anything to any of those people ever again. I understand. Do you? Do you? This is it. I'm telling you, this is it. Now this decision sends all the managers and everyone on the board into a massive uproar. Thankfully, there are a few people in this company that actually have a brain and morals that go to him and say, hey, if you're gonna do this, a lot of clients are gonna figure this out fast and they're gonna completely distrust you after this. So even though you may have all the money and you would have liquidated all the assets that you have, what's the point of having the money in your business if no one's going to buy from you? So he proposed that they shouldn't do this and that they should find another way, but instantly this proposition was was refused. So I want to go back to the point that I made earlier to where I told you to put yourself in the firm's shoes. And let's put this in perspective for a second, okay? Let's say you and I partnered and we have our own investment firm. We can go ahead and put ourselves in the same situation as the one in the movie and say that we have a ton of MBSs and that all of our assets are tied up in those said MBSs. So? How would you deal with the problem? Would you follow through like the CEO in the movie and sell everything knowing that they're going to be worthless and in the end screwing over a bunch of ordinary people like you and me and also other businesses? Or do you force yourself to sit there and watch everything come to a fall and all your work and money come down crashing before you? I think you can see the point. This was a very hard situation and a very hard question to answer whenever dealt with at 3 a.m. in the morning. And many business people would say, hey, that's Wall Street, baby. It's cutthroat. You do what you gotta do to survive. And honestly, I could totally understand that. But then that one clip that I showed you at the beginning of this video comes up and he looks at his colleague straight in the eye and he says, Oh, <laughs> well, it's just money, guys. Like, why is it such a big deal to you? <laughs> Who cares that we're screwing other people over and that we put other people out of business? That doesn't matter. We're at the top. It's just money. Yeah, tell that to all the people who are struggling to live paycheck to paycheck. I'm sure they'll just say it's just money as well. And just in case you haven't figured it out by now, this story is heavily inspired by the Lehman Brothers situation that happened in 2008. And some of the things that they did is directly correlated to what happened into this movie, but not everything. So I just wanted to let you know. And to just give you a perspective on what happens when an investment firm like Lehman Brothers, as big as they were, goes under, Lehman Brothers involved more than 600 billion dollars in assets 600 billion 
with a B. That bankruptcy triggered a 4.5% one day drop in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. That is the biggest decline since the September 11th, 2001 attacks. You know, with this amount of money being lost, it kind of reminds me of someone. Does anyone remember his name? <sighs> Shit, I forgot it, but you know, maybe later on down the line I'll, I'll remember, but whatever. This just goes to show you what kind of danger big companies are possessed with whenever they try or whenever they try to do anything bad and it goes under or it comes out and everything just comes to a halt. But that's why I love Margin Call because it brings up everything that happened and not of the ways of Hollywood where everything is so over exaggerated or there's tons of music and all these actors. No, it's just more grounded. But that's enough about me talking about it. If you want to go see Margin Call yourself, I would go ahead and rent it for a day or two and just get a feel of what the movie is about. And trust me, it just changed my way of thinking a little bit on how companies are and how big a crash can happen whenever one company that is too powerful can fall apart. With that being said, this is the end of the video, so I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in the next one.